So in this video, I'm going to answer a very fundamental question that my patients ask me all the time, which is, why is my blood pressure high? Is it something that I'm doing wrong? Is it something that I can control? And so we're gonna talk about the different mechanisms of high blood pressure, the different factors in your life that may cause your blood pressure to go up. And we're gonna start you know, seeing some of the opportunities that we have to lower blood pressure. So let me start just with a very basic divide. There are genetic factors that determine your blood pressure, and there's also lifestyle factors uh, that determine your blood pressure. Things you can't control and some things that you can. So the things you can't control include your genes that you're born with, that you inherit from your mom and dad. And I would say that doctors and scientists are only scraping the surface of how genes affect blood pressure and understanding the different roles that they play, much less you know, manipulating the output from those genes to control blood pressure. But we do know that diff different people have different genetic tendencies when it comes to retaining salt and fluid, when it comes to how blood vessels respond to stress and other stimulation, uh, when it comes to kidney function, and when it comes to inflammation and other factors that affect the blood pressure. So the genetic code that you're born with does have some say on your blood pressure. In addition, another factor that you cannot control is your age. And as you get older, your blood pressure will tend to get higher. And that's because blood vessels become stiffer as you age. You get more calcium in the blood vessels. And that calcium turns the blood vessels from these compliant opening and closing, um, sort of expanding and contracting uh, rubber-like pipes to more like concrete pipes uh, that don't comply as that rush of blood comes into them and that causes the blood pressure to be higher. So you can't control your genetics, you can't control your age, and those both do play a role. But there are a lot of things you can control that do affect your blood pressure. And I'm gonna go through most of them now. So uh, one is the food that you eat, specifically how much sodium you eat. So sodium is a very common salt, it's a major salt in the human body, it's in every single cell, um, and it's in your blood and, and basically every fluid in the body. And the reason that sodium is so pivotal to blood pressure has to do with how the body regulates the concentration of sodium in your blood. The concentration of the sodium, meaning the amount of sodium per unit of fluid, has to be kept in very tight boundaries because if the concentration goes outside of those boundaries, it can cause fluid to shift in and out of cells and cause major cellular problems. And the way that the body um, essentially controls the sodium concentration in your blood is by matching the fluid that it retains to the amount of sodium that you eat. So if you eat a really salty meal with lots of sodium being absorbed from your gut, your body, to prevent the sodium from getting too concentrated in your system, has to absorb and retain enough fluid to dilute all that sodium. And so that's why you know frequently people will notice that when they eat salty foods, they can get a little swollen, especially around their ankles, and that's because their body is retaining extra water to dilute all that sodium that you ate and keep your sodium concentration overall in a, a constant range. And you pee more after you eat a salty food because eventually your body's gonna try to get rid of that extra sodium and it has to get rid of extra fluid lest you know, your body actually become too diluted with sodium. Um, meaning that as you get rid of sodium, you have to get rid of water too so the sodium doesn't become too dilute. So um, one other place where that fluid can go in addition to your ankles is it fills up your blood vessels more and it raises the pressure. So the more sodium you eat, the more fluid you retain, the higher your blood pressure gets. And cutting down your sodium intake is a major way that you can reduce your blood pressure as we'll discuss later. Other things uh, that are part of your diet that can affect your blood pressure include caffeine. So uh, drinking lots of caffeine, which is a stimulant, will raise your blood pressure. Alcohol will also raise your blood pressure and cutting back on that is a great way to get your blood pressure down. Smoking cigarettes is terrible for you for many, many reasons. And one of those reasons uh, is that in the short term, the nicotine will raise your blood pressure. Certain uh, medications are known as stimulants and stimulants can raise your blood pressure. A very, very common one is uh, pseudoephedrine. So uh, pseudoephedrine is a decongestant found in a lot of allergy medicines. It's the main ingredient in most formulations of Sudafed. Uh, anytime you take an allergy medicine that has the letter D at the end, like Claritin D, for example, that D stands for decongestant, and it's usually a sign that there's pseudoephedrine in it. Pseudoephedrine can raise your blood pressure and your heart rate. Um, and so if you have high blood pressure, 
is something that you might not want to take on a regular basis. And that's why you'll see ads for uh, cold and flu medicines uh, designed for people with high blood pressure. That's because they don't have pseudoephedrine in it. Now, you know, you can take an Allegra D every now and then if your allergies are really bad, but it's not something you should take on a regular basis um, if your blood pressure is high. So that's one kind of stimulant. Um, another is medications uh, that people take for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So people with ADHD often will take amphetamine derivatives to help focus their attention. And those amphetamines are all stimulants and they'll raise your blood pressure and your heart rate. Uh, the supplement known as ephedra will also raise your blood pressure. Um, and so, so those are the common things that, that people can take in their diet or in their medicine cabinet that will affect blood pressure. Uh, two other ones uh, are pain medications known as NSAIDs. So pain relievers like ibuprofen, marketed as Advil or Aleve, uh, naproxen, um, uh, also known as naproxen, um, uh, meloxicam, catorolac, all of the NSAIDs that people take for joint pains can raise blood pressure if taken you know, in high doses on a regular basis. And one more surprising one is actually hormonal contraception. So women who use hormonal contraception, whether oral pills or IUDs or such, uh, or implanted devices, uh, those hormones can raise your blood pressure. So, you know, if, if you're a woman with high blood pressure and you use hormonal contraception, you might consider, if you have another good option, using a different kind of contraception, maybe. Um, okay, so those are, those are a, a few more medications uh, that can be relevant. Um, another major factor for your blood pressure is your weight. The heavier you are, the higher your blood pressure tends to be. And if you lose weight, you know, the opposite is true. Your blood pressure tends to go down. There's a variety of reasons why this might be true. I don't think anyone really knows the exact reason, uh, but heavier people tend to have higher blood pressure. Alongside that, people with sedentary lifestyles tend to have higher blood pressure. And that's because exercise helps lower your blood pressure. And if you don't do it, you don't get those benefits. Um, there's a few other medical problems uh, that can cause high blood pressure. A big one is kidney disease. So sometimes the first sign of kidney disease is uh, high blood pressure. And that's why all people with high blood pressure should have their kidney function checked. Um, usually that comes in the form of blood tests and urine tests. Um, and because when the kidneys stop functioning properly, it can cause them to retain more salt and fluid than they're supposed to. It can cause the release of certain hormones and inappropriate levels, and that can cause high blood pressure. Um, very rarely, diseases affecting the arteries going to the kidneys uh, can cause high blood pressure um, through a, a series of mechanisms. And sometimes when people have really difficult to control high blood pressure or their blood pressure is elevated from a very young age, uh, we check uh, an ultrasound of the kidney arteries to make sure that those aren't narrowed. Um, other organ systems that can affect the blood pressure include the thyroid gland, the thyroid gland here in your neck. Uh, if overactive, uh, if you're hyperthyroid, that can raise your blood pressure. Uh, other symptoms sometimes include weight loss, um, feeling hot all the time, um, especially when other people don't feel hot, uh, being sweaty all the time. Um, uh, having diarrhea, those can be other signs of thyroid dysfunction. Uh, the adrenal glands, which sit right on top of your kidneys and make a variety of different hormones, can be responsible for high blood pressure. Hormones like cortisol and aldosterone, if overproduced, uh, can cause high blood pressure. And doctors will sometimes check these hormones in people who, again, have very difficult to control high blood pressure or early onset high blood pressure. Another medical condition that can cause high blood pressure is sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is basically extreme snoring. If you think about it, it's, it's a condition where you are, uh, in, normally when you snore, it's because you're sort of partially blocking your airway while you're sleeping. And that's because all of your muscles relax when you're sleeping. And sometimes in certain positions with your muscles all relaxed, your airway can get kind of compressed. Um, that causes that sound of snoring. And if that's carried to extreme and the airway is all the way compressed and no air is getting in or out of your lungs, you stop breathing for a moment or two or three, enough that you wake up you know, for a moment, take a breath and then fall back asleep. And, and people often you know, can wake up dozens, hundreds of even, times even in a night and not even know um, that this is happening because it's so momentary, they don't remember it the next morning. But you know, they feel like, tired and sort of sleepy throughout the day. If you know you share your bed with somebody, they might say that you snore a lot. 
you could have sleep apnea and that is a common reason uh, for elevated high blood pressure and treating it helps bring the blood pressure down. So um, those are really the main contributing factors to high blood pressure. Uh, just to review, there are genetic factors that we only partially understand, aging, um, dietary uh, intake, uh, sort of different foods and medications that can affect high blood pressure. Sodium is a big one. Uh, alcohol, smoking, stimulants uh, such as pseudoephedrine, amphetamine derivatives, uh, the supplement ephedra, pain relievers known as NSAIDs and oral contraceptives all can raise your blood pressure. Uh, being overweight and having a sedentary lifestyle will raise your blood pressure. And then there's a variety of medical conditions uh, such as kidney disease, kidney vascular disease, uh, thyroid hormone problems, adrenal hormone problems, and finally sleep apnea. So based on all that, we can now talk about what tests your doctor should be ordering for you if you're diagnosed with high blood pressure. So pretty much everybody diagnosed with high blood pressure should have a test of their kidney function. That's a blood test looking at how well the kidneys are filtering your blood, as well as a urine test to see what's ending up in the urine. If you have very early onset high blood pressure, uh, you know, in your 20s, early 30s, uh, or very late onset high blood pressure, or your blood pressure is just really hard to control, we usually will also do an ultrasound of the arteries going to the kidneys to make sure that those are not narrowed. Another set of tests that uh, generally should be done in people with very early onset, late onset, or difficult to control high blood pressure is a test of adrenal hormones, um, looking at aldosterone and sometimes cortisol. Pretty much all patients should have their thyroid function checked when they're diagnosed with high blood pressure. Uh, if it seems like you might have sleep apnea, you should have a sleep study to formally diagnose that. And finally, everyone should have an EKG to look at their heart and see if there's any evidence that your heart is enlarged as a result of your high blood pressure. Uh, you know, I would say about maybe 10% of the time that workup yields a specific other diagnosis that we can treat to bring down your blood pressure. Unfortunately, in about 90% of people, there was no readily reversible cause for their high blood pressure. And so we focus on lifestyle changes and sometimes medications, as we'll discuss in the next video. So I hope that that was a very helpful overview of the many reasons that your blood pressure might be high. Some of the tests that you should have done when you're first diagnosed with high blood pressure, or if somebody didn't do them, you should have them done later. Uh, and as I mentioned in the coming videos, we'll be talking about how we can use all this information to help lower our blood pressure. So stay tuned.